Today on DoodleBod, we're checking out the Kegloo 316A fountain pen. Again, this was sent to me via AliExpress as part of the initial contact and asked me to select a few pens. This is one of them. I've looked at it before, but just never, uh, you know, completed the order sitting in my cart. This time I did. I'm going to roll through the pen, give you my thoughts, dimensions, comparisons, all that type of stuff, little improvements I've noticed. But first, let's just get right to it with some glam shots. Hope those close-ups helped you out. Let's uh, get you even closer and take this whole thing apart. Have the parts sort of laid out for you here, but let's run through here. Here's the uh, feet, sorry, the nib, I should say. Have a look at that. You can see it's got this bit of a kangaroo logo on it there and this one as you can see is an f for fine here's again a close-up of this particular feed we've all seen this feed before in most fountain pens nothing too uh new there but let's put this back in it goes into the housing housing has a nice little silicone o-ring there at the bottom just to help with any potentials of of ink uh, flowing out of there and leaking out. I haven't had any troubles with leakage at all. You could see some little key marks uh, sort of on the side there, but this nib and feed is keyed so it orients just one way. Pop it in there, away you go. You're just going to screw that into uh, the whole section part. Now, if you paid close attention on the video, this, this part here that comes off is a left-hand thread. You go lefty, loosey, there we are to snug it down so keep that in mind that's how that comes off of course there's a nice little uh ring there as you can see on the inside edge to accept that so that's a nice little design they didn't miss miss that so you have a nice quality seal there so happy with that overall converter fits in you can see here 316 the model number just says 21 i guess yeah, I don't know what that means, and it's got the branding K-Glue on there as well. One little thing I've noticed, I'm going to show you this on the body. Uh, a little bit of carnage with this. Uh, the first two threads that start on there, I don't know if you can pick it up with the camera, but it's pretty chewy. we got some pretty good edges on those, so those ones are, uh, <laughs> you can see the debris. Uh, but yeah, a bit of a serrated edge there on, you can, and then just one more thread in. So those little notches, I'll show you what it's done to the body. So don't know if that's a one-off or that's a common thing, but just a little bit of a gnarly thread on this one. Nice little converter on here has the K-Glue brand on here too, but very familiar looking converter. Fits on and then we screw it on. Goes on nicely, but let me get you to the microphone. So just a little bit more noise than what I would be looking for. And it just has to do with those first uh, couple threads on there, you know, having a bit of an edge on them. And you can see in the body, it's sort of trans this translucent. They say it's celluloid. I don't know 100% for sure, but they say celluloid. But you can see those two dark rings on there. That's from those first couple threads. So it's actually showing up on the body there a little bit just over time. Those ones just getting a bit chewy. So uh, anyways, but yeah, it's not the best sensation. What I'd recommend in this case, and I'm going to do it right now, is just a little bit of silicone grease. It'll help a bit, but it is it is a bit rough, so uh, that will just persist. One thing I forgot to do, actually, in the full disassembly is this cap here in the back. That screws off as well, so it's like a blind cap. And then you got this chrome ring sort of washer type shape that fits on there as well. That's just, you know, a trim piece. One thing that would have been great, so you can see the converter down there just a little bit. Oh, the focus is terrible today. Uh, so there's a converter down there. Would have been nice. Maybe it's a little bit of a missed opportunity. If they had an extender on the converter uh, so you can come out. You got the blind, ca uh, blind cap, sorry, and then you can fill and uh, do that with the pen that way that would have been a little bit neat so but do keep an eye out when you disassemble it that uh, you could potentially lose the ring on the back and then the cap these threads work quite nicely goes on about two and three quarter turns you can see the cap band here 
It's got some nice little pattern with some, like, I guess, black lacquer that was filled in there. I got some black ink on my fingers here from playing with the pen. On, on the top, again, a little close-up of the K-Glue logo. Looks like a kangaroo with a little Joey in there as well. Nice little clip. Pretty firm. You know, yeah, it's that's a pretty stiff one. And what you see is what you get. Total dimensions of the pen as you see it like this now, 137 millimeters. You take the cap off, about 127. As far as diameter, 13 in the body. The cap is 15. And then the section starts up near here at the top of the section, about 11 millimeters. And just like a one millimeter taper down here to about 10 at the narrowest part. Let's see how much this pen weighs. I haven't weighed it yet, and it's nice and light, so I'm not thinking too much. There we are, about 26 and a half grams. Pop off the cap. And about 10 and a half grams. So that may leave 16 grams for the body. That is also with the converter, and it's inked up. So nice and light, not too heavy. That's uh, be nice. Oh, getting lots of ink on me now. <laughs> I'm going to watch up and we'll continue on. Here we have a quick visual size comparison. So we have the K-Glue 316 there, Palette Metropolitan, my Schaefer PFM, my vintage one. Love that pen, Parker 51, Lamy All-Star, and then my Enso Italia in titanium. And here we are, same pen, same order this time with the caps off. I didn't bother doing posting because with this pen, it doesn't post very deep and uh, not overly secure as well. And when I said it, it posts, but not very deep or secure, you can see it gets just insanely long if you go to post the pen. And uh, it's not just on there super secure, but it is long enough on its own not to be posted. So what I'm going to do now, the pen is inked. I think I have Noodler's Black in here. I filled it a few days ago. I can't remember now. I'll do a writing sample, chat about how well it writes, go over the what I like, and also a few little things I found that they can improve. I find the writing experience with the pen quite nice. The nib is reasonably smooth. It even has a little bit of, you know, line variation. If you push on it, don't go crazy. This is not a flex nib, as you all know. This is a fine point. It's, I would say, pretty much around a fine point. Not ultra fine, maybe like a, a fine medium. But it performs quite well. Haven't had any issues with hard starts or dry up when it's in the pen and capped up. So, you know, it just, it's performed pretty much flawlessly. The tines on this one are a bit tight. Um, if you are a very light pressure, you know, soft writer, I could see it skipping a little bit on you. I checked it with the feeler gauge there and it was just a, a bit too tight. So this could probably benefit from opening up a little bit more if I just kind of go super gentle. And if you write fast, it might skip just, well, that was, I missed the page there, but I might miss just a little bit. If you get a little more pressure, you got no problem. So yeah, that tying gap, a little bit narrow. You, the one you get or don't get, whatever, could be a little bit different, but something to keep in mind. What I'm going to do now is uh, just try to wrap things up a little bit and then just show you a few little things I found where there a slight improvement could go a little bit further. And what it looks like, I'll take the flash off. My overall in the impressions of the pen, it's, it's pretty decent. I believe the price listed is something like 33 or 34 Canadian dollars. The styling, we've all seen pens like this. This is pretty classic. As far as performance, it's been spot on. The writing experience is nice. It's, there's no back weightedness or awkwardness with it. The grip section is reasonable. The threads, if you are a high gripper, I don't think those are going to bother you whatsoever. So I don't have anything bad to say on it as far as it performing. Like I said, this particular nib, the, the tines could be open to touch. If you put a little more pressure, it's going to be just fine. Um, but yeah, overall function, all that is good. There's just a couple little nitpicks on here. So let's get to the first one. And this just has to do with a bit of an assembly procedure. So you got this cap band on here and you can also see there. Uh, actually, we can see it now. There's that little gap right there. If you Pardon my fingernail, but right there, there's a little gap. I measured it. It's about 10 thousandths of an inch, one ten thousandth. That's about point, a quarter, quarter millimeter. So what happens is, and you can see it goes up to here. This is an inner piece that gets slid inside of the main cap body. So this retains this cap band. Uh, it's also the part that has the threads. And if you, oh, you can see it right down there. 
that line that's right down there, I'm doing it with my fingernail on the outside, that's the end of this inner cap piece that slides in. And obviously you can see it's glued in because there's uh, just some uneven application of the adhesive. So it leaves parts that didn't get it and parts that did. It's not coming out, it's, it's properly glued, but uh, you just do see a discoloration, a change between the parts that were wetted and those that weren't. So that's a little detail. If you maybe you gotta put a little bit more on there, just spin it to make sure you have a proper even distribution of the glue, then you wouldn't have that visual effect. It doesn't affect the pen in a negative way as far as function, but that is just a visual thing, especially because these are, uh, you know, sort of translucent. If we unscrew the body here, uh, as I came to it, it's just these threads, maybe a little closer check on them, a little better deburring on these, or just the, the when the threads are cut on here, if it's, you know, depends on the process they use. But uh, those are a bit gnarly, and it does take some casualties with it. You can see the, the ring there on the main body. So... That's one little thing to watch out for on these if they had a little tighter control on that. Again, I don't think that's gonna strip the thread out. Uh, you know, 10 years from now, it's probably still gonna be okay. It might be a little bit looser, but uh, yeah, a little tiny de detail on that would improve longevity and just overall feeling uh, of the threads when you're working with it. So that's all I have this time for this pen here, the K-Glue 316A. In the description, I have a link for it, but check around, there's lots of different colors. So that's kind of a cool thing, lots of color options. Nib is extra fine, fine, and medium. Not a ton of nib options, but you know, the general ones that everyone likes. I think the price is, is pretty reasonable. Uh, as far as the discount code, Still, I have it as D-O-double-D. Uh, I inquired out to Ali to see if that discount code, I call it the 420 deal, $4 off on a $20 spend. Uh, apparently, all the codes were used up pretty quick. I'm trying to get uh, some more details if that's going to get refilled or if there's a new code or if that has expired. I inquired, haven't heard back. Check the description for updates. I will update if I get any new news on that one. And same with the community page. I'll make a post on there if I have anything else to share. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts and experience with the pen. Like, subscribe. Catch you next time.